Thank you, and uh, thank you, Ranking Member Westerman, uh, Chairman Newhouse, and uh, for having us here today. And I want to thank the witnesses for taking time to share with us how the Biden administration's energy policies have impacted your communities. The opportunity to join my colleagues in bringing to light the heavy cost of Joe Biden's flawed climate goals imposed on the American people. Very, very much appreciate that I can be here. Uh, in the six months since Joe Biden took office, the price of a gallon of gas in the United States has risen by 45%. The people who are most affected by the administration's anti-domestic energy approach are families and individuals on fixed incomes, especially our seniors. The average price of gas is roughly $1 per gallon higher than a year ago, with inflation increasing the prices of so many other consumer products. How are Americans going to afford travel, to and from work, purchase groceries, and make ends meet in their daily lives. With the price of fuel skyrocketing, we must redouble our efforts to safeguard mining. Pennsylvania ranks first nationally for underground gas storage sites, second for natural gas production, and third for coal production. In 2019, the U.S. Energy and Employment Report stated that the fuels industry employs over 54,000 Pennsylvanians. 42% of which were directly in mining and extracting. Uh, so, uh, Ms. LeBlanc, could you uh, speak as to how, uh, speak to how immediate broad stroke regulatory action has impacted the economic health of the communities uh, with which you work? Yes, thank you. Sorry, took me a second to get off mute. Um, you know, these broad stroke regulations and a broad stroke leasing uh, ban in the Gulf of Mexico has had a tremendous impact on the state of Louisiana. As I mentioned earlier, um, for the state of Louisiana, we have 250,000 jobs that are dependent on the oil and gas industry in this whole entire state. Down along the Gulf Coast, um, many, many jobs. And it's not just those jobs that are directly related to the to the folks that go offshore and are doing the hard work of the offshore development. It's also those onshore jobs, whether it's the hardware stores, the grocery stores, the car dealerships, every single trickle down uh, industry is dependent on a robust offshore industry. And right now, as we're seeing uh, this administration make these broad strokes, part of the problem is it gives cast that uncertainty. And if there's one thing that's needed for offshore investments, it's a high degree of certainty, as we heard some of the other panelists talk about. And so the impacts um, to, the, to the businesses, to the jobs, and then of course, to the revenues that are uh, not coming to local government that funds the schools and the fire departments and all those essential services. So we're seeing it firsthand. Uh, 2021 was supposed to be a great year of rebounding and coming back, but unfortunately, uh, these broad stroke regulatory issues and leasing ban is having a negative effect on our coastal communities. I appreciate that insight. Uh, Mr. Neal, uh, I was wondering if you could speak to the current regulatory environment you're experiencing in Texas and how you view the state of America energy independence. Thank you. Uh, the state of American energy independence is dependent upon favorable governmental regulations to allow us to plan for the expenditures. You know, everything that has been talked about today is all centered on the fact that we need the energy to support the growth of our economy and our country, but we need it for the full employment of the people that live in our various states. And as we spoke earlier, uh, the, the real problem that we're having in the deep water Gulf of Mexico, which contributes directly to uh, the state of Louisiana's employment and also their income is, unless we're able to plan, we can't spend money. And if we can't spend and invest for the future development of energy for our nation, we will be having to lay off people and, and move to another business model to do something different. So. The, the 
the failure of the administration to recognize what the United States oil and gas industry contributes to the stability of the American economy and jobs of the American people will eventually boomerang and come back to haunt us like it has previously when we've done things contrary to the best interest of our people. I appreciate that. And I, I see that I'm, I'm about out of time here, but I just want to thank you for your, your insight on the investment in, in future development, because we're going to invest in future development. We're not going to see the uh, energy that we're going to need for, for our economy and, and to make sure that we're successful in America. Um, you know, I hear the president say, build back better, but we're not going to build anything unless we have energy independence and abundance of energy in the United States. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you.